Recently, I tweeted and created a tool, which is all about redirection and it is written in C-sharp. Now, in this video, I'm going to explain how it works, the its source code, we're going to go through one by one, and also we're going to explain the whole theory behind the redirection and why it's so important. So stick to the end to find out and learn how to do proper redirection and in what scenario you actually might want to do it. Now, first things first is that here, I'm going to explain the basic fundamental thing behind redirection. And that is simply to forward traffic from one places to another. In that case, the diagram I create in Obsidian Canvas showcase that perfectly. So you have host one, host two, and host three. And essentially, when you set up the redirection, the host one traffic is sent actually to host two, but host two automatically translates it and auto sends it to another host on the network or on a different network. In that case, it's host three. And that's all it is. That's all what redirection is, and it's that simple. But now you may ask, well, what's the big deal behind it? Why do we need to care about that kind of stuff? My answer is the following. We have two main applications of that technique here. And in one application, we have external redirection. And in the second application, we have internal redirection. And my tool can do both. So external redirection looks like that. Imagine you have a network. And inside this network, you have your victim, obviously. And then you have your C2 infrastructure, a Kali with MIDI C2 or anything else in your controlled environment. Now, you want to send some phishing mail or do some exploitation and let the victim connect to your C2 infrastructure and achieve callback. Now, that's nice, but there are many caveats to that. Because if you were to use direct connection like that, it can often be blocked. The reason for that is you have mail filters. You have system that scans specific IP ranges and detects if they're malicious or not. And if your IP range by accident gets in there, there's no turning back, your IP is considered malicious, and nothing's going to connect to you whatsoever, and you're going to live the lonely life of internet darkness. There are plenty of reasons of why you do not want to do that, because imagine you can do one, three, four, five pen tests or red team operations using your direct C2 as a infrastructure, but then when that's been scanned and when every the, the attack has been analyzed, you're going to be fracked as malicious and this IP address of your C2 is going to be no longer usable. However, if you use a redirector like that, redirector has its own IP address, which IP address is not considered malicious. And when someone, someone connects to the redirector after it's been scanned, it's going to be too late because you can just shut it down, create a new one, and then you can re recreate the connection once again with a different IP address. So if you have redirectors, you can ensure that your C2 infrastructure will not be triggered, will not be detected, and your C2 connection will be as planned. Now, that's the one main reason behind using redirectors. And nowadays, I don't know a red team in operation without the proper redirectors. So that's how the life actually is now. Now, usually as a redirector server side, you can choose something like Azure, AWS, Digital Ocean or anything else that can spawn boxes at will. But essentially, the main idea is to have a dummy machine which is going to forward all the traffic. And essentially, you're going to evade scanners to scan your own machine, your own city infrastructure, but they're going to rather scan the non malicious redirector, which is going to be all right for the engagement. Now, here we have one more scenario of when you're going to need a redirector, and that's when you do internal redirection. Now imagine the following scenario. You already compromised the network. You already compromised a victim to machine and you connected the victim to machine to your C2 infrastructure or a redirector that connects to your C2 infrastructure. Do not matter. That's not important for now. However, inside the network, there are many other machines which you most likely want to compromise as well. And in that case, if you want to achieve the same as the victim to, there are chances that this machine will not have outbound traffic enabled. So you can think of them like domain controllers or specific designated servers, which just simply cannot connect outbound. If that's the case, if you run your beacon on it, it's going to run, the AV is not going to detect it, but the network is going to prevent the beacon to connect to your C2 infrastructure. And that's why you might want to need to have internal redirection. Because if you set up a redirector on your compromised machine, 
then the different machines can most likely connect to the one in the same network. And then you can use the one on the same network to tunnel your traffic to their traffic to your C2 infrastructure. So that's why you need redirection. Now the redirection implementation can be different. You can use everything from SOCAD to manual written code. And now you can use also Sharp Redirect. I decided to come up with Sharp Redirect because usually tools for redirection are Unix based, such as SOCAD. And essentially, if you need to do such internal redirection, it's going to be hard. And that's why I decided to do it in C Sharp to make the life easier. Now, let me showcase how it works in a real life scenario. And then let's move on into the source code itself. Now, to showcase the scenario from a theoretical perspective, I have designed the following canvas again in Obsidian, which showcase my current environment and my current settings. Now, on the external network, you have, we have Akali with Mythic C2, and it has the IP address of 192.168.1, actually 0157. This is as the external network. Then you have a PFSense firewall, which essentially acts as a bridge between my internal local network and domain called lsec.local and the external network, which in my case is my Kali C2. And by the way, if you need more videos about how to set up your infrastructures and on the network side and not only, just hit me up in the comments. Then on the firewall, obviously you need to have two IP addresses. One is the internal one, one is the external one, and this is the one, the one machine who is going to do all the NAT. And after the firewall, you have two machines. One is SQL01, which is our current compromise machine, and you have DC01, which is the domain controller, which we have credentials to, but we cannot get the C2 to work. And the reason for that is the firewall. Now you can see here that SQL01 has approved outbound traffic. So this server can connect to the outbound internet and request things like Google, YouTube, Vice to infrastructure, or anything else. And this is visualized by following the green arrow pretty much. Now on the one hand side, the DC01 can try to connect to us, but it stopped on firewall level. So the first request, the first packets actually go, go through, they reach up the firewall when they're blocked and they cannot reach our city infrastructure. So that's why we're going to do several things. We're going to first create a redirection using Sharp Redirect on SQL1 machine. We're going to instantiate and create a new hound agent having the IP address of the SQL01 machine. And then we're going to connect the DC, execute, execute the PowerShell snippet, which is going to connect back to SQL01 and then to our C2 infrastructure. Now, to make things easier, I'm going to use remote desktop because that's how we can see the things visualized. But the main idea of Sharp Redirect is that you can use it as an assembly, so you can just run it from your C2 and make the same thing happen. Now, obviously, here I've already compiled and downloaded Sharp Redirect. So if you run Sharp Redirect, just like that, you're going to see its options on how to execute it. So in a nutshell, we need to specify the local port on our machine. Then we need to specify the port, the destination host, and the destination port. So you can also use for example, you can intercept the incoming port 80, but then forward it to 8080 or anything else. Now, in that case, to make things simple and clear, I'm going to use the same port. So in that case, 443, then we're going to use the destination host, which is going to be 192.168.0157. And then the destination port is going to be, again, 443, because that's on what on which port my haunt agent operates. I'm going to run that. And now you can see that we have started our port 443, and now we are listening for traffic. If I open another PowerShell, I can do netstat, a no, and then just I'm going to pipe that to select string, and then type 443 just to see if the port is running, and indeed it is. Now the redirection is complete, but now we need to do something else inside our C2 to not make mistakes. Now on the C2, I want to generate a new beacon. So I'm going to go to actions, I'm going to Click on Generate New Payload. I'm going to go to Windows. Next, I'm going to go to Haunt My C2 Agent, which I need to say special thanks to my Patreon for supporting me and making this agent possible. So if you have further appreciation and want to access the agent, just you can support me on Patreon. Click Next. Now here I'm not going to add any additional commands because we don't need that in the moment. The main idea is to showcase how the redirection works. And then I'm going to click just Next. And now here is the key thing. Here is the exactly the key thing. 
Now, usually the HTTP profile is designed to set up this as a remote host, aka on what host to connect to. But in that case, since we are using the redirection, we need to specify the host name and the port of our redirection host. So in that case, this is going to be the SQL auto machine. And if I open a new PowerShell, I'm, I can do IP config. And this is the IP address which you're gonna need because once again, we want to do that thing here. So the beacon we generate from Kali, Kali is, is needing, needing to have the IP address of our redirection point. Now here, if I go back to our C2, now we need to specify the IP address of the SQL01. So 172, 60, 60, 52. I'm gonna switch the callback interval in two seconds just to be easier. The port is gonna be the same. And now we are done. I'm gonna click next. I'm gonna create a payload and this is gonna generate a new beacon. Now I've already done that and to save time and not download it again, I've already have it on my domain controller here. So there it is, the hound.ps1. So I can essentially run hound.ps1, execute it, and then if everything is all right, I should be able to see a C2 beacon and there it is, the new callback of this PID. And also just to prove myself, I, I opened the hound.ps1 using Notepad, and as you can see, the IP address of our server is not the CAD infrastructure, but rather the SQL01 machine with its own IP address. Now about the code base, you can expect something complex, but trust me, it's definitely not. We have just about 130 lines of code, and let me showcase it one, one line at a time. The first class, so we have two classes, one is being program and the next one is being port redirector. Inside the program class, this is obviously where the main method is. And inside the main method, we just make sure that the arguments are correct for the program to work. AKA, we would need a local port, a destination host and destination port. If any of these arguments is missing, then we just exit the program and we prompt an error. Then after that happens, all the next steps are actually super simple. We instantiate a new redirector, which is a new object class port redirector. And here we pass the variable we provided. Okay. Then we go to the class. This is constructor. These are all, the, all of its attributes. And we have several methods. We have method for start. We have method for stop. We have method for accept clients. And we have method for handle clients, which pretty much that's all about it. We have one more helper method, which is actually private. And this method just copies, as it says, the stream of the data from one place to another using the write async or the AKA uh, stream, stream class. Now what happens? The key logic is here. Okay, so we, in the very core, in the very basic of this program, it creates a TCP client, it creates an open port, and as soon as there is some the kind of a traffic to that TCP client, it just writes it out to the destination and that's all what happens. Now here you, we have a try catch statement and inside this try catch, we are using the destination client. So we open clients to two different locations. One TCP client is for our own interface and another TCP client is for our destination on their specific port. And essentially we use the two instances of copy stream just to see if we have some traffic on our side. We just forward it using the copy stream function. Now that's all about it. As mentioned, or if not mentioned, the code is in my GitHub. So you can just go there, see it, modify it, and make it better for your needs. It's completely open source and feel free to use it with caution, of course. So that was the video. I really hope you had fun. I really hope you learned something new. If that's the case, make sure to smash subscribe, like button. Make sure to also join the Red Team in our Discord server where we share experience and knowledge. Thanks so much for watching and I'm going to see you into the next one. Special thanks to my Patreon. Thank you so much for all of your support. See you.